hello. <laughs> it's me, Nestor Sebastian Miranda. And the new little set I got here. I think I prefer this to just my room in the corner. But, you know, you guys tell me what you think, of course. We got two movies got to talk about. You know, usually like to balance it out like at least one good movie and maybe one not so good movie. Today I got two real stinkers for you. <laughs> um, first, let's talk about Ambulance, a movie that a lot of people like, and I get the uh, initial appeal of it because it's a kind of feels like a throwback to older days where simpler action movies can get made, and it's people are really sad that of course it's not doing well at the box office. Uh, and it's a sign of the times that movies are changing, maybe for the worst. And I get all of that. I get all of that. But I uh, did not enjoy Ambulance. Very sorry. Michael Bay is a very flashy, very in-your-face director. I, that, that's his style. I, I, I just don't like it. it just, it's just too much. It's just too in-your-face. The action is always too... Cut, cut, cut. Um, in this movie, he utilizes a drone, which is pretty cool. Every time there's a drone shot where it's like going down through buildings or whatever. It looks great and it shows the potential for that use of technology in these types of films. But yeah, again, it's just like I always feel like his style, it could just if it was just pulled back enough, uh, it would be really cool. Like what I want is a Tony Scott movie. What I imagine, uh, which is obviously a huge inspiration for him. You know, like, I think Tony Scott is the version of the Michael Bay style that actually works. The effects were good. Uh, I'm going to say that right off the bat. Uh, Michael Bay has always been a practical guy. And so even though this film is low budget, it's only $40 million, it, you know, it's as intense, you know, practically. It looks as good as any other big blockbuster nowadays. So I have to give it props there. As a director, you can tell Michael Bay's focus is on the big intense action scenes uh but it feels like as an obligation he feels like he needs to put like heart in there he needs to put like a sense of like human connection in there if you watch a movie like pain and gain you can tell that he is just that's the that's his style at his most extreme there's no explosions in it but you can tell that that's where his heart is at when he makes a story where there's no humanity whatsoever like the characters just uh, absolutely are dog shit throughout the whole thing and he enjoys that he revels in that but when he's making these movies with a bigger budget he wants to appe appeal to a bigger stu uh, audience he has to give them heart and it always feels so rushed it always feels so forced uh, so half-assed every time these characters have an emotional moment I never buy it Jake Gyllenhaal who's the villain of the movie does a great job uh, he does He's menacing in the perfect way. He knows what kind of movie he's in and it, it works perfectly. And again, there's no humanity in his character. So in a story like this, he works great. I'm uh, I'm Hispanic and I unfortunately, this is unfortunate, but I don't think I'm going to be able to pronounce this name. I'm not going to try. Here it is. This actress also did an amazing job. This is why I'm bringing her up. She did a great job. She deserves all the credit in the world. If there is any humanity in the movie, I think she works. Her introduction scene is actually really good. And you buy her arc in the film pretty well. The story is uh, is original. Uh, I'll give it that. It's a great premise for a movie. I mean, it's very reminiscent of Speed. Obviously, there's some parallels there. But, uh, no, it's a great premise. And I that's just, that's the reason I was looking forward to it because I knew it like from the trailer I was like that th this could work in a different context. The pacing is just all over the place. I guess the problem with this premise is that the it's so razor thin that they kind of just need a st like there's like the middle portion of the movie is just them stalling for time, trying to figure out what to do. Another way they have around this is there's a lot of humor, and I really hate Michael Bay's sense of humor. It's so juvenile. It's so childish, and for a movie like this that's kind of taking itself seriously, it feels so out of place. And then towards the end, like when you think the movie should just like end, they give you like 20 minutes of like just like showing everyone's arc coming to a close and this really forced resolution of every character. It's too much, you know? 
like for a movie like this, you gotta know like when the action's over, you just gotta wrap it up, you know, as soon as possible. But this movie really kind of just like keeps going and going and shit. You know, it just it doesn't work. And again, I think the biggest problem with this movie is it's just not fun. You know, you go to a movie like this, you just expect to have a good time. I just genuinely did not have a good time. Maybe I'm weirdly in the minority on this. Michael Bay has had a really weird career in terms of how people perceive him. He used to be considered the death of cinema, and now he's kind of had this like reinvigorating kind of status as like the last great like action director with any sense of like personality to him. And I can appreciate that, but genuinely, I just don't like his movies. I, I just when I uh, I like The Rock. I enjoyed Bad Boys. I liked The Island. Um, but lately, he has not had a hit for me. He has not had a hit for me. I also saw another movie. And I'll give Ambulance this. It's, it's better than this movie. Um, hey, Fantastic Beasts and Secrets of Dumbledore. Oh, boy. Um... I'll give the movie this. It's directed competently, unlike uh, what's it called? Uh, any other movie by David Yates, which I find I find his directing style to be a very weird, abnormal, incompetently shot. It always feels like this is like like he's experimenting with random shots, and then the other shots he just lets a ad kind of do the rest of it. Uh, it's so off putting. This one it feels like he kind of like steady down. You know, everything is shot normally. It's not great, but it's normal. The effects are below average, um, especially since there's a lot of characters having to hold animals or objects with them. Uh, and it just always feels like they're holding air. It never feels like it's like convincing to the environment at all. There's a lack of any main character in the story. It keeps jumping around between characters. And that wouldn't be a problem, except for the fact that none of them are really interesting. Especially Newt Scamander, who in the other movies I found annoying, but in this movie I found very forgettable. He's just, like, it, it's weird because the movies are centered around him. Like, the movie is called Fantastic Beasts based on the briefcase that he has. But within each installment of this film, he becomes less and less important to the overall plot. And him being there just feels like an obligation at this point. Same thing with Kowalski, uh, who is a fan favorite, but really has absolutely no fucking reason to be in the story uh, at this point. Uh, it kind of, it made sense in the other two, but in this one, it just completely falls apart. Why are you putting this human in this war? They give him a wand at one point, and you think that's going to be a major plot point, and it goes nowhere. He never uses it. I don't even understand if he could use it or not. Uh, it, a lot of missed opportunities like that. I mean, you have a whole setup where you have like a, a non-magical character gets a wand and you think like oh he's going to use do cool magical stuff and then he never does anything with it he points his wand at someone once and then the rest of the movie he just kind of sits there you know and kind of just does nothing occasionally tells a joke or whatever the villain played by mads mickelson uh grindelwald com uh, mads mickelson is completely wasted in this role um He's a great actor, but in this movie, he has absolutely nothing to do. Same thing in Doctor Strange, which is a movie I like, but again, they just take Mad Mikkelsen. He looks kind of evil, I guess, because of his face, and they put him as these generic villain roles, and he can do so much more as an actor. He's very talented, but they keep just kind of segregating him to this kind of just like, like in the shadows evil guy. Ezra Miller, uh, character who I forgot, Seatridge or something. He had a big part in the other two movies, and in this movie he was completely wasted. Um, not completely wasted, that's the wrong terminology, because that would imply that his character was a good character to begin with. But in the other two movies he had a sense of importance. Like, they build him up to be this, like, big, epic, grand wizard. And in this movie, they barely even ever touch on that. Like, he has nothing to do. So it makes, like, again, it's like Newt's commander, where it's like his role feels pointless when he used to be super important to the plot of this film, to these films. There's nothing original here. They don't add anything except for this movie is about rigging an election. 
fucking Christ. This entire movie is about like politici- politicians and stuff and uh, fucking like elections or whatever. It really feels this feels like we're watching the prequels in a way. Because if you remember the Phantom Menace, people complained they took these fun action adventure series and they filled it with political discussions. And they've done the same thing for these Fantastic Beast movies. They've turned into just like a bunch of people just having these weird political discussions when they used to be more. Uh, when they used to, when the original Harry Potter films were just fun adventures with likable characters. And uh, yeah, J.K. Rowling has gone down a ro- the wrong path in more ways than one. I'm not talking about her personal history, but as a writer, she. I saw someone bring this up in another video, but I think a reason for it is because she used to have nothing, you know? She grew up with nothing, she had nothing. She made. She wrote the Harry Potter books on like a napkin, put them on like a piece of paper. She she somehow sold it. She's like one in a million chance, you know. And I guess now it's just come to the point where she's so deluded that she doesn't think anything she could do is wrong. And just like George Lucas, she has a bunch of yes men telling her what to do. Uh, not to say George Lucas is as bad as J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling is worse than George Lucas. I'm going on record for that. And... Uh, so yeah, I guess that's where I'll leave it uh, with the, these reviews. I don't give scores for them, but uh, I do not recommend either of these films. I feel bad, but that's, just, that's how it is. So please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.